I am trying to fight a child abuse, which I believe to be the proof of the existence of evil in the world. I think that our job as artists is to speak the truth about things uh, and not to keep anything hidden. I found out that the people who were responsible for telling lies in the first place were the Vatican, who, uh, through permitting the invasion of uh, countries and the, the destruction of entire races of people in the name of God and for money, and their subsequent overtaking of the educational systems of all the countries that they went into uh, led to um, distortion of historical fact. But for the longest time, a lot of people didn't really like Sinead like that. She was actually hunted, hated, and attacked by many celebrities and by the Vatican. <laughs> Her story is a very interesting one that not too many people know the details. In this video, we're going to talk about all of that. Some of the stories that people are not talking about, one of them in particular that is very interesting, is how she spoke about how Prince, yes, the iconic Prince, attacked her in his Hollywood home. And the story is just so crazy that it's almost unbelievable. We're going to get into that. But First, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn on your notifications if you're already subscribed so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. So Sinead O'Connor is a legendary Irish singer-songwriter who has made an unforgettable impact on the music industry with her powerful voice and profound lyrics. Her career took off in the late 1980s with the release of her debut studio album, The Lion and the Cobra. However, it was her second second album, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got, that skyrocketed her to international stardom. I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got sold over 7 million copies worldwide and included her iconic single, Nothing Compares to You. The song topped charts across the world and became Sinead's claim to fame. And throughout her career, Sinead released a total of 10 studio albums. Her music has inspired and impacted countless people and continues to be celebrated today. Sinead has won numerous awards and accolades. She has been nominated for 10 Grammy Awards. Now let's get into our childhood. In kindergarten, Sinead won a prize for being able to curl up in the smallest ball, but her teachers and classmates would have been shocked to know why she was so good at this. And it's a tragic story. At home, her parents were extremely horrible to Sinead and her siblings. Sinead was born in Dublin, Ireland on December 8, 1966. She was one of five children born to John and Joanna O'Connor. Her dad was a structural engineer turned lawyer who focused on issues of divorce. Sinead's mom passed away tragically in a car accident in 1985 when Sinead was just 18 years old. And as a young teenager, Sinead was a bit of a troublemaker. She was addicted to stealing. She, yes, she had sticky fingers, y'all. She said she couldn't stop. It was just something that always propelled her to steal. Sinead got her sticky fingers, though, from her mama. Her mom even went as far as taking money out of the collection plates during church, yes, and encouraged her daughter to ask strangers for donations, like they'd come up with little, you know, scams to kind of get donations from people. Her acts of shoplifting and skipping school got her into trouble and eventually led her to being sent to a girl's home, which was an asylum, actually, and this was run by a group of nuns called the Order of Our Lady of Charity. While being there, she was able to develop her talents for writing and music. She did have some freedoms like attending school outside the home and being able to listen to music and write songs but if she was ever punished she had to sleep in an old folks home which was pitch black and smelled terrible and she would hear the older people moaning in their sleep which was traumatic to her and this experience gave her deep anxiety and fear and this is how she developed agoraphobia where she always felt unsafe around different situations, crowds, even being alone. She always felt unsafe. Her brother Joseph did confirm that their mother was kind of like a psychopath and really hard with the punishment, but he denied the father's abuse towards Sinead. Like he defended his dad basically, but was like, yeah, our mom was crazy, but our dad was cool. But according to Sinead, hey, she got it from both parents, both emotional and physical. So I had to come back and add this piece in the video as to why she cut her hair, which is very tragic also. She first shaved her head when she was 20 years old. Her mother did suffer with some addictions. She said her mother never provided her children with basic hygiene. So they would go five years living in the same clothes, never washing them. Yet her mother used to praise Sinead's appearance from an early age. She said, when we were children, my sister had beautiful red hair, glorious red hair. But my mother took it into her head that my sister's hair was ugly and horrible and disgusting. So her mother didn't like her sister's hair. She would introduce us as her pretty daughter and her ugly daughter. So she would introduce Sinead as the pretty daughter, okay? She explained, and that's why I cut my hair. I didn't want to be pretty. Of course, Sinead suffered a lot of unwanted attention from men at such a young age, which made her desperate to avoid attention. She said, it's dangerous to be pretty. I kept getting, you know, touched without my permission and violated and victimized everywhere I went. I didn't want to be touched 
you know, I got to censor my words for YouTube. I didn't want to be touched without my consent anymore. I didn't want to dress like a girl. I didn't want to be pretty. So I wanted to look like a boy. Let's get into the SNL scandal. So in 1992, Sinead O'Connor made an appearance on the US late night television program, Saturday Night Live. And as a musical guest, she was originally scheduled to sing two songs from her album. However, the day before her live appearance, she was given permission to perform an acapella rendition of Bob Marley's 1976 song, War, which revised lyrics protesting child, you know, people taking advantage of children, basically. At the end of the performance, she tore up a photograph of Pope John Paul II. You know, that picture is uh, of him um, when he did his tour of Ireland. Ireland has the highest instance in Europe of child abuse I experienced it myself, um, and I found his presence in Ireland telling the young people of Ireland that he loved them hilarious. Fight the real enemy. We know we will win. We have confidence in the victory of good over Evil. While she did not initially mention the church as a perpetrator of, you know, these type of acts on children, because the times are still sensitive, guys. You just could not during that time, the 90s. I know that wasn't too far ago, but during the 90s, you just could not come and boldly say, hey, I know what the Pope is doing and these pastors and leaders and stuff. People would really come after you. But she later on, as the times got a little bit more open, started to express her actions and the reasons behind them. The backlash she experienced was fierce. People were angry and outspoken about how her actions actions were disrespectful to the Pope and the Catholic Church. She faced severe criticism and backlash from journalists, religious leaders, and the general public. Some people even made death threats against her, and she was continually criticized in the media for many years. Frank Sinatra said she was one stupid broad. Madonna mocked her by jokingly ripping up a photo of her. Which is crazy to me because I'm gonna do a video on Madonna in the future, but like Madonna, <laughs> the Catholic Church had their problems with you too, girl. So I don't know. And according to the Washington Times, Sinead was the face of pure hatred. This was the Washington Times that posted that. She was the face of pure hatred. So she got it everywhere she went, right? The message I'm giving is that the, the church must be brought down, destroyed. Their days are numbered. They must be brought down. So uh, to rip up the picture is what I'm saying. Yes, it is offensive to people because they've built their lives on, on this belief. The Irish Church took out an insurance policy in 1987 to protect them against claims they foresaw would be being brought by victims. We knew in Ireland 10 years before anyone in America or Canada knew, so I understand that at the time I made that gesture, it was an abhorrent idea in America to suggest that a priest could be sexually a child. So I don't have any you know, bad feelings or anything, but I completely understand why people found that an abhorrent idea. You know? If I hadn't done that, we wouldn't be sitting here now clarifying all these things. So it was to create discussion to create the circumstances under which I would be asked these questions. You know what I mean? God says, I bring not peace, I bring a sword. That's the way it goes. And, and we can't heal ourselves unless we fight the right enemy. The right cause is no good just dealing with the symptoms. The outrage during the era of her performance was intense. The Catholic Church was a dominant force throughout the world, and O'Connor's actions were seen as attacking one of the pillars of society. Many saw her actions as disrespectful and unforgivable. Now that Sinead has passed away, many people are reevaluating her actions, while there are still some who feel that that she went too far. Many now recognize just how brave she was to speak out against the church at a time when few were willing to do so. Since then, the Catholic Church has been exposed for countless cases of inappropriate behavior, and Sinead's actions have helped to shine a light on the problem. In a July 2007 interview with Christianity Today, O'Connor stated that she considered herself a Christian and that she believed in core Christian concepts about the Trinity and Jesus Christ. She said, and I quote, I think God saves everybody, whether they they want to be saved or not. So when we die, we're all going home. I don't think God judges anybody. He loves everybody equally, end quote. And in an October 2002 interview, she credited her Christian faith in giving her the strength to live through and overcome the effects of her childhood atrocities, all the things that happened to her. Writing for the Sunday Independent, she labeled the Vatican as a nest of devils, stating that Christ is being murdered by liars in the Vatican because all religions, but certainly the Catholic 
Catholic Church is really a house built on sand and is drowning in a sea of conditional love and therefore it can't survive. And actually the office of Pope itself is an anti-Christian office. The idea that Christ needs a representative is laughable and blasphemous at the same time. Therefore it is a house built on sand and we need to rescue God from religion. They've become a smokescreen that distracts people from the fact that there is a Holy Spirit. And when you study the Gospels, you see the Christ character came to tell us that we only need to talk directly to God. We never needed religion. Comment below your thoughts on that. God does not need a representative on earth. He said, don't call anyone father except him. Okay. That is my personal belief on that. The Christ was not a character. He is the son of God. That's my personal belief on that. I do believe most religions move in fear in and and do distort the word but when you read it for yourself you see that the way these leaders pastors and all of these people are are going about um manipulating the people is far and very contradictory to the word so i agree with a lot that she says and all you really do need is the holy spirit to gain all understanding of things right i know this video is gonna be a little controversial i know you guys are very opinionated so keep it respectful in the comments respect everyone's personal views and beliefs it's okay no one's you know a bad person for how they believe have respectful dialogue i'm gonna say that because she was this character throughout her life when she lived that sparked a lot of conversations that were she was a figure of controversy you know so even after death she still is going to have a lot of conversation around her beliefs so please please be respectful in the comments okay now when she was asked whether from her point of view if it was irrelevant who was elected to be pope she replied and said generally i don't mean disrespect to catholic people because i believe in jesus christ i believe in the holy spirit all of those but i also believe in all of them religion is a smoke screen it has everybody talking to the wall there is a holy spirit who can inter who can't intervene on our behalf unless we ask it Religion has us talking to the wall. The Christ character tells us himself, you must only talk directly to the Father. You don't need intermediaries. We all thought we did, and that's okay. We're not bad people, but let's wake up. God was there before religion, is there today despite religion, and he'll be there when religion is gone." End quote. Carmel Valera thought, in 2017, Sinead changed her legal name to Magda David, saying in an interview that she wished to be free of the patriarchal slave names. On her conversion to Islam, Islam in October 2018, she adopted the name Shuhara and before mid-2019 also changed her surname from David to Sadaqat. After a conversion to Islam, Sinead called those who were not Muslims disgusting and criticized Christian and Jewish theologians on Twitter. She wrote, and I quote, never want to spend time with white people again, not for one moment for any reason. They are disgusting. End quote. Later that month, Sinead stated that her remarks were made in an attempt to force Twitter to close down her account and that she was just trolling, basically. And in September 2019, she apologized for the remarks, saying they were not true at the time and they are not true now. I was triggered as a result of Islamophobia dumped on me. I apologize for hurt cause. That was one of the many crazy tweets, Lord knows. And Sinead had four children and was married and divorced four times. In a 2000 interview in Curve, Sinead said that she was, you know, she went both ways. That was in 2000. And she later retracted the statements and in 2005 told Entertainment Weekly, I'm three quarters heterosexual and a quarter gay. <laughs> and speaking about her relationship with Prince, let's talk about this real quick, okay? In an interview with Norwegian station NRK in November 2004, Sinead said, and I quote, I did meet him a couple of times talking about Prince. We didn't get on at all. In fact, he had a punch up, she continued. He summoned me to his house after Nothing Compares, which is a song. He said he didn't like me saying bad words in interviews, so I told him to F off. He got quite violent. I had to escape out of his house at five in the morning. He packed a bigger punch than mine. In her 2021 memoir, her 2021 memoir, Rememberings, O'Connor described her meeting with Prince in detail, which ranged from having his butler serve soup repeatedly despite no desire for soup, to hitting her with a hard object placed in a pillowcase after wanting a pillow fight, and stalking her with his car. Uh, the story was that, yo, he invited me to his house, that's according to Sinead. I didn't want to eat soup, but he kept having his cook or butler provide soup over and over again and forced me to eat the soup. Proceeded to telling her to stop cursing and then he was angry and then he wanted to have a pillow fight with her and put hard objects inside of the pillowcase and hit her with it. Now after that it gets even wilder. She tried to leave. She was like, you know what? 
let me leave this is crazy but he chased her around the house blocked the door and did not want her to leave and then she ended up they ended up physically fighting and then she exited the house ran out and went to hide in bushes from him as he went to look for her in cars so she said she hid from him until sunrise so she left late in the house it was like 5 a.m she was in the streets hiding from him until sunrise finally he ended up finding her in his car telling her to get in the car to take her home she didn't want to she ran to a house knocked on the door for somebody to open um, the door for her no one opened so she walked until she found a payphone no one believed that this had happened to her and then she later you know did retract this now she said in a 2004 interview she backpedaled on the claims calling prince a sweet guy and saying the story had been exaggerated in the press but after Prince died of, you know, an overdose in 2016, Sinead only seemed to step up her verbal attacks against him, telling police investigators Prince was into devil worship and a woman beater. It's not just substance he was into, it was darkness. She told investigators from the Carver County Sheriff's Office two weeks after Prince died in a recorded interview that was later made public. O'Connor told the investigators who were probing Prince's death in his Minnesota mansion, Paisley Park, that the singer had a substance habit for the entirety of his life and used hard substances commonly. Now, comment below your thoughts on this, okay? I'm nobody to say, I know Hollywood is stranger than fiction, okay? A lot of stuff happens in Hollywood, it's crazy. Yeah, you guys hear people speak about this all the time. I'm not saying that she's lying or anything like that, or it's not believable, and we've heard stories about Prince too. I'm just curious to see what you guys think of this old wild story. Sinead disclosed that she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and had attempted to take her own life on her 33rd birthday. Sinead said that she had received three second opinions and she was told by all three that she was not bipolar. Sinead was also diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder and borderline personality disorder. You all know about her son, her 17 year old son who had a mental crisis and ended up in a hospital. However, he went missing after that. She posted countless messages on social media like my world would collapse without you. You are my heart. Please don't stop it from beating. Please don't harm yourself. You know, it was really sad. Her pleas went unanswered. Days later, they found his body and Sinead experienced every parent's worst nightmare. She was grief stricken. She tried to make sense of what had happened. And she eventually said, may he rest in peace and may no one follow his example. My baby, I love you so much. Please be at peace, end quote. Four days ago, July 26, 2023, Sinead was found unresponsive at her flat in Herne Hill, South London, and later confirmed dead at the age of 56. Her family issued a statement later that same day without indicating the cause of her death. The following day, the Metropolitan Police reported that O'Connor's death was not being treated as suspicious. And a lot of people have a lot of theories that maybe, you know, and I don't know what to believe. Like I said, Hollywood is weird, okay? Y'all know Hollywood is weird. That, you know, after she spoke out, maybe, you know, a lot of times when celebrities speak out against certain things in Hollywood, they can so easily put substances in your drink, food, you can, whatever you know have access to you they have access to you don't own yourself once you go into Hollywood. well you don't even own yourself as a citizen you could just be taking shower and then put shower in a whole community neighborhood or city to mess up your skin or to develop some kind of you know whatever it, these things are not conspiracies i right now a lot of declassified information has been out on experiments that were conducted on people so there's a lot of craziness out there that people are like what if you know they made her start to lose it or she had a lot of surgeries and medical procedures after what if that was a thing to kind of she was speaking too much facts and then she started going crazy announcing a lot of her earlier beliefs but in very odd ways so it went from it was like two different personalities but then she had bipolar and she suffered a lot in her youth but a lot of people said she had a lot of clarity also when she was young and didn't really back down from what she said comment below what your thoughts are. What do you guys think? This is crazy. Leave a thumbs up if you watch until the end and leave a white heart in the comments for her. May she rest in peace. And if you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. Be sure to subscribe for tomorrow's video. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.